good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is you happen to be watching this. And welcome back to The Mind in a Storm. This is our third episode in the series. And we are talking about mental health, keeping your mental health, keep just basically keeping up positive mental health as opposed to mental ill health. What do I mean by mental health in general? So the WHO, that's the World Health Organization, defines mental health as a state of well-being in which an individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, um, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution, a contribution to his or her community. Now that is completely different from probably what you had in mind when I said mental health, which is being locked up in a mental asylum because you have serious, serious issues. Mental health is just the state of well-being. So the same way we look after our bodies by eating, sleeping well, drinking lots of water and exercising, we need to look after our minds as well. What happens when we don't take care of our mental health? Well, one in four people experience mental health issues every single year. 792 million people are affected by mental health issues worldwide. At any given time, one in six working age adults experience symptoms linked to ill mental health. And in, you, in England alone, mental illness is the second largest burden of disease. Mental illnesses are more common, longer lasting and more impactful than any other health conditions. The cost of ill mental health in England alone is estimated to be at about 105 billion per year. That is a high cost for not looking after ourselves. Of course, not every ill mental health is caused by us not looking after ourselves. We have susceptibilities to some things, but there are ways we can prevent ourselves from descending into ill mental health. And that's what we have come here to talk about. For many, 2020 was a monster year. There, was, there were job losses. There was fear created. There was panic worldwide because of this pandemic. And as such, many lost jobs, businesses, family members. And I, I think many also struggled with their mental health. And many probably are still struggling with their mental health. If that happens to be you, keep watching. Today, we are talking about loss and grief. We're not talking about ill mental health in terms of any disorders, depression, or anxiety, specifically not in the medical sense, but we are talking about loss and grief and how we cope with that. And today, to lend their perspectives and to give us their knowledge and wisdom on this topic, I have with me Dr. Rachel Ita. Welcome. Okay. And Pastor Amy Iguion. Hello. Thank you and welcome. Could you please introduce yourselves, Dr. Rachel and Pastor Amy? Well, thank you for having me again, um, Chi, on the show. Um, and um, I'm Rachel, and um, I am a lawyer, and I work as an academic. I am a senior lecturer working at the university, and I enjoy teaching, actually. I know some people might be wondering, how is that even possible? But I do enjoy um, lecturing. I am married to um, Henry, and we are blessed. Um, with two lovely girls, Annabelle and Hannah. So it's a privilege to be here today. Thank you. And um, Pastor Amy, introduce yourself. Thank you, Chi. Um, it's great to be back here again, you know, just having this very topical conversation. Um, so I will say I am a passionate Jesus follower um, and he has given me the privilege to be a mom of three boys. We live in Canterbury with my husband, um, and I am also an executive pastor at Favour House Church. So I also work for the NHS. So yes, it's been really busy with the pandemic. I have helped out the organization with COVID response. So um, there's a lot of work going on out there, obviously, to combat this um, disease. And we thank God that we now have a vaccine um, and yes, hopefully there is some light at the end of the tunnel. So that's me. Thank you so much. Um, and I am your host and moderator, Chi Ohi. I am a YouTuber, a mom of three, a mental health advocate, and I host the channel, the uh, 
podcast, Enlightened Mental. I am a I'm the curly hair doc at the Chi Ohi channel on YouTube. So you can check that out later. And I'm also a Jesus follower. So mental health is one of my biggest passions. And it I think it's very, very important for us to be able to link our mental health to our spiritual health because they are actually very much intertwined. And today in particular, we are talking about grief and loss. And that is, it's a big, big topic because those are some of the most the most difficult things that can really tear people away from their spiritual grounding. They can tear people away from their, from their sense of identity. Everything that we've talked about before now, they can really cause big issues with that and can really cause people to slip into ill mental health. So lending us your perspective, I would love to ask um, Dr. Rachel to start us off. What's your perspective on loss? Wow, loss, you know, it, it is a big one, isn't it? You know, when you think about loss, whether it's loss of a job, um, as, as we've seen in this pandemic, loss of a business or loss of a loved one, um, which is a reality that we've also seen um, in this pandemic, all of that can really have a big impact on our lives. And talking about our mental health definitely have a big impact on our mental health. Um, you know, the Bible is clear about loss. There are times and seasons in our lives. And I think maybe I would like to start from there, just saying that there are times and seasons, just like you have in our natural world, we have our spring, we have our summer, we have our winter. Um, we have autumn, you know, there are times and seasons and they come and they go. But in every season, maybe what I'd like to say is that God's love is constant in all of those seasons. And um, so just as we have loss, on the other hand, we have seasons where there's rejoicing, where, where there's newness, where there's birth, where there's a new job or maybe even a new person in the family. So God is with us in those seasons of our lives. That's what I would like to start with, just that assurance. And then when it comes to loss in particular, I just want to highlight, for example, the loss of a loved one. When it comes to that, um, you know, we are created, and I think we mentioned this in the last um, episode about the fact that we have been created by God but there's something that comes with life is that in our seasons there is life and there is death the Bible says in Ecclesiastes there is a time to be born and then there's a time to die so it's almost the one thing someone talks about an appointment that we all have to keep and that is an appointment with death from the perspective that at some point in our lives actually death is going to come it's something that is almost a sure thing we're not going to be here forever there is going to be that but from a christian perspective death is not the end and 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 that is what i i see that it's not the end um yes we may be separated here physically but actually there is going to be a day where actually we're going to see life after death so that brings hope that brings hope. In um, Psalm 116, verse 15, it says, Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. And you think, how can that be precious? If that was the end, then we might think, no, it can't be precious. But when you realize that this is not the end, we are beyond just this mortal physical body. We are spirit that live in a body. Um, and there is going to be a time when we're going to see these loved ones again. And then we realize, actually, there is the grief here, but our hope can be that this is not the end. Um, and actually, we will be reunited um, with them. So I, I see um, loss, especially with regards to the loss of a loved one. It reminds me of the fact that actually um, there are seasons in our lives. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. Um, but I have hope. Um, that actually we our life is not just here there is more to our life than this physical time where we are thank you for that that's it's important to be able to still have hope um even when we are facing something as tough as the loss of of a, a loved one um because the the most the most uh difficult thing about losing a loved one is the fact that whatever you wanted to say to them or you think you should have been able to say to them, you cannot now say that to them. Mm. Or, and, and that's what most people think about. It's just, 
well, this person left this morning or I spoke to them the other day and I didn't get to say X, Y, Z, or I never got to hear them say, I will never, the, the most impactful one. So I, I lost my father a few years ago. The most painful thing for me was thinking I would never be able to hear his laugh again. And I don't have it recorded anywhere. I just have to try and remember it in here. Mm -hmm. I'll never hear that laugh again. But being able to remember that there is hope and we will meet again someday is something that you can, it's comforting. And some people may not believe in that, but as Christians, we do. And that's that's something that we that can comfort us in such a difficult time. I would love to hear your perspective as well, Pastor Amy. Thank you, Chi. Um, thank you so much, Rachel, for sharing that and Chi as well, because wow, what a hope that one day we will see them again, that death is not the end for the Christian, that I will see my granddad um, again and my grandmom. You know, I was really young when I lost my grandparents and um, I still remember them. I was only six when they passed away, but my grandfather left such an impression that I do remember him and he was a godly man. And to think that one day again, I'm probably, I don't know, I was gonna say maybe one day I'll jump into his arms again, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if, if that's going to be happening in heaven, maybe. But, you know, to think that I'll see him again, what a glorious hope. But the other thing I wanted to say about loss is that what is the loss of a job, the loss of a loved one, you know, a child, a husband, a wife, spouse, whatever, um, loss can come with a crushing loneliness and despair and feelings of low self-worth and low self-esteem. It comes and affects your identity and affects you on different levels. And of course, we're tempted to ask why. But I think because we're looking at this from a godly and a Christian perspective, what has God got to say about loss? So Rachel just shared that God sees as precious in his eyes and in his sight the, the death of his children. But also, let's read Psalm 34 verse 18. Um, I think it's so important to know what God thinks about those who are left behind when we're feeling those, um, when we have those feelings of, of crushing loneliness and despair. Psalm 34 verse 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. And maybe you're listening to this and a loss has come, the loss of a job, the loss of a loved one. It took you unawares and unexpected. I just want you to know that there's somebody who is close to you right now and really mm. cares about what you're going through. And not only does he care, he can rescue you. Let's not wallow in that despair, in that depression. Let's allow the one who is always close to lift us out of it. Because the thing with loss and these feelings of grief and despair is that it could go the other way. I know I, I was reading about um, in the papers recently about um, a young man, um, a present on TV actually, who lost his girlfriend and he couldn't live after the loss of his girlfriend and he committed suicide. And so loss can come with that crushing spirit of loneliness and despair and depression. But I want us to remember that God is close and he wants to rescue you from it. So let's reach out to the one who loves us and allow him to comfort us with his love and with his presence and all the other things that we shared in the last episode. So I just wanted to add that bit. Thank you so much for that. So uh, you've kind of started going into the next thing I was going to ask, which is, what do we do with our questions, most especially God, why? So I, I think because you've already started answering that, I'd like to ask this particular one to Dr. Rachel. So what do we do with our questions? Particularly, oh. that God, why? Like, why now? Why me? Why do I have to feel this pain? Why did you even let me love this person if you were just going to take them away again? Yeah, thank you for that. And just thank you, Amy, for that contribution. Um, I think Psalm 34 verse 18 is such a beautiful scripture when you know that God is just right close to you. And I want to pick up on something before going to the thing about the question, just um, when you talked about how that loneliness um, can even lead to despair, to think maybe I, I shouldn't be here, I can't go on. And, and if someone acts on that, you know, sadly, that could be the loss of an, another life. Mm. Um, and I still remember I was probably, I think I was 16. Was I maybe I just crossed 17 when my mom died at 17, yeah. And I still remember the first thing when I when I when I was told the news, when I came home and, and realized that she'd passed, I still remember my first words were, 
why are we still alive? Not just myself, but the whole family. I was like, why are we still here? We should be dead. Because my 17 year old mind could not comprehend that actually that we could actually leave without my mom. I couldn't see any hope, any life, any future without her because she was like a rock in the family. Everything revolved around her. She was the one that was present. She was the one that was interested in your day-to-day -day activity. She was there. And that really, that was a big deal for me. I just, I really did not think. And now I look back and I think, how was that? But I really didn't see any hope. You know, I, I didn't, I thought, of course, if she's gone, we should be gone. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, all these years now, you see how God has worked through that. And I, I look back now and I think every one of us has carried on with our lives, you know, and I, I see God's hand in shaping. And and one scripture that, that really um, encouraged me a lot is this scripture in Revelation 21.4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. You know, there is hope. Death is not always going to be there because actually there is a longer life um, with us. And then just coming to the question, I didn't, when I lost my, and I have, experienced um in terms of very close family members i lost my um elder sister much earlier on in life um and then i lost my mom and then i've lost my dad so i've had quite a few um sort of like close um losses now because i was raised i i became a believer quite early on in life and one of the things we were taught along that path of discipleship was that we shouldn't like question god we shouldn't say why you know we shouldn't ask this sort of questions so at the time in each of those situations even going back to like my sister and my mom because i was a lot earlier i was a lot younger um i didn't necessarily ask why but that was mainly because of that conditioning because that's what we had been taught you know but i couldn't see a way forward but i didn't necessarily ask why did this happen but when i read the book of job and i'm re actually reading the book of job now in my bible in one year and it's there were lots of questions asked why why would god do this why would this happen it was all of this stuff and then god comes in and he starts asking them questions you know you ask a question it's like he turns the question he starts asking where were you when i formed the earth where were you and suddenly everybody is quiet <laughs> and you think wow my understanding is minimal but god knows it all now sometimes when we ask why it it, it can almost be as if god if you love me, why did you allow this to happen? And what I want to say is, if you're asking that question, don't beat yourself up. You know, you know, you can't. He's our father. You know, you can say, you can say to your father, you can ask your parents, say, oh, why did this happen? That, that that's not that's not a problem. But let's be open to allow his love to lift us from that place because I found out that God does not tend to necessarily answer those kind of questions straight up. He's not going to say, this is exactly the reason. But that's because I think it might blow our mind. He knows what we can handle. Um, and so he rather chooses to come and comfort us and lift us to see that there is still hope. There is still a future for you. I've got good plans for you. This does not separate you from my love. He comes with that encouragement to us in the midst of that. So if you're asking why, don't beat yourself up. I wouldn't say beat yourself up, but I'll say God would like to cause you to lift your eyes even above that and to see his love even in the midst of your pain. Thank you for that. That's really that's really beautiful um, to know that there isn't necessarily an answer that we can under, we can comprehend in terms of what the questions are. And God doesn't say, "Well, shut up and don't ask don't ask me those questions." He says, "Ask because you need to get that out of your system." I can't explain that to you right now, but come into my arms and let me comfort you. And that's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. Um, which leads me to the next question, which is. How do I mean that kind of is starting to answer it already, which is how do we pick up the pieces and get back up again, including in our relationship with God, especially for people who are perhaps finding it difficult to um, to reach out to God. And 
yeah, I would really like to hear about that. Um, um, you know, I think I like what Rachel said that, you know, we sometimes religion teaches us certain things about how we approach God and how we speak to him. But I think that at the heart of our relationship with him, um, you know, we because he's a father, like Rachel said, we can actually come to him very honestly and pour out our hearts to him. And um, if you listen to the first episode, we talked about casting all our cares. He asked us to throw them to him because he cares about us. And so I think that, you know, in grief, when you ask why, God knows that you're in pain. He knows there's confusion. He completely and totally understands your feelings a million times more than you would ever understand them because life is so complex, complex to us, but very simple and open to God because he is God. And so when we ask him why, yes, we might not get an answer directly. And depending on what your relationship is with God, because I know people who God has actually explained to why, um, but you might not hear anything, but I think something Rachel said is so important even if you know why, is that enough to help you out of your grief? It might be too complex for you to comprehend. And so the most important thing is really about lifting up your perspective and getting out of that situation so that you can go on living. And I think that, you know, sometimes when it's the people who are left behind that are really suffering because the person, if, if you have a loved one who's a Christian, they're probably in heaven. Some of you have seen the shark and, you know, this little girl dies and leaves her parents behind and they have crushing grief and sadness until her father has an encounter where he sees this girl so happy in heaven. And he comes back and he says to his wife, she's happy. And his wife starts weeping with such relief because they're happy. We're the ones who are left behind feeling all this loss. And when we recognize that God is actually looking after our loved ones and he takes away that pain from us, that begins to help us to heal a little bit at a time. So what do we do with those feelings? If you're a Christian, you give them to God. If you're not a Christian, trust God and come to him. He can help you with those feelings. Take it one day at a time, pour out your heart to him. There will be good days and there will be bad days. There are days you wake up and you say, God, I don't understand this, but whatever you do, Keep talking to him. Keep giving him that pain and that burden. The worst thing you can do is in the midst of that crisis to turn your back on God. Because what that means is you're now helpless. You're trying to solve an impossible situation on your own, and that's not going to work. So bring those pains, bring those frustrations, no, no matter how you feel, pour them before him reach out to him constantly. And like Rachel was sharing, it's a journey, but you will come out through it. And you know, your mom will be looking at you now, smiling down and so proud <laughs> and so happy, you know, mm. that God was able to help you and not just you, but your family through that really trying time. Mm. You know, imagine losing a mom when you're a teenager. Most, I can't even begin to imagine what mm. that does to you as a young person, but God has mm. brought you through it beautifully. And you're not scared by it because the other thing is you come out on the other side trauma free. You know, some mm. people might actually survive grief and trauma, but they're barely surviving. They're only existing. But God doesn't want us to just exist. He wants you to come out on the other side whole. And why does He want you whole? So you can help others. Mm. You talked mm. about the story of Job. When Job was restored, God said to him, Forgive your friends and I will restore you. So sometimes mm. when we're restored, we also need to then help the other mm. person. So in grief, oh, you might say, oh gosh, why should I be thinking about other people here? Grief can do that to you, but don't forget that your story can absolutely transform somebody else. Mm. How God helped you out of grief and trauma can make a huge difference to someone else. So accept the help from God and then become that source of help to somebody else. Today, Rachel can comfort somebody who is 16 or 17, mm -hmm. who is going through the loss of a parent because she's been there. God has beautifully brought her out through it. Mm -hmm. So, so those are some of the perspectives, um, you know, that I, I, I'd love to, that I, you know, that I, I, that come to my mind when I think about loss and grief. Thank you so much for that. So, I, I mean, I, I just wanted to ask finally, if it, are there any other important perspectives that you'd like to lend to this particular topic in terms of dealing with grief and things that sometimes perhaps people miss or people don't think about or even us as Christians dealing with 
friends or family members who are struggling with grief as well? How do we deal with all of those things? What would you like to add to that, uh, Pastor Amy? Okay, so two things I want to touch upon. The first one is that it's very easy when we've talked about casting all your grief and anxieties and all of that to the Lord and keep doing it, take it one day at a time. Um, but also sometimes loss of a loved one in particular could come with the fear of death. And I just wanted to say, please remember, like we said, that there will be a grand reunion. You will meet them again one day. Let that hope comfort you. But also... I like the scripture that says that Jesus holds the keys of death and of life. Sometimes people think it's the devil who has those keys. No, Jesus does. What the devil has is the fear of death. So when you go around afraid, sometimes people die. You know, we hear of psychosomatic illnesses. People die actually of a fear of a disease rather than the illness itself. And sometimes the fear of death can actually kill. So please don't get caught in that web. Jesus has the keys. He's in charge of death. And when it's time and it's, you know, my time, I'll go peacefully, happily. And that's what I believe. And I want you to also hold on to that hope that Jesus is for you and not against you. The second thing I was going to say is that if you're that friend who is trying to comfort somebody who is going through loss, because it's so difficult sometimes to know, to, to know what to say um, to people who are going through loss or grief, please don't be that friend who thinks you have, you have to give advice. You know, sometimes just being there for that person is the best thing you can do. Just your presence, just running errands, buying them food or going, getting the groceries or having the children is the best thing you can do. Don't rush to give advice because it can be viewed very negatively. It could come across as even offensive or hurtful. And a good example is a story that Rachel shared about Job in the Bible. His three friends thought that they were so full of wisdom and clever and they were crushing this poor man and actually blaming him for things he had never actually done. So let's be sensitive, let's be kind, and let's just be there. Let's be a calming, reassuring presence for people going through loss, whether it's their loss of a job or loss of a loved one. Let's not be judgmental um, because you could be doing more harm than good in that circumstance. So. Those are kind of the things that I wanted to share on, on that. Thank you so much for that. And Dr. Rachel, what would you like to add if there's anything? Yeah, else? just to endorse really what um, Amy has said, I think it's so important um, about not beginning to have a fear of death. Um, sometimes if you lose a loved one early, there can be that fear that, is that going to happen? Is this going to be a cycle in the family? You know, there, there can be those sort of fears that rise. But um, I think we mentioned this scripture before about perfect love casts out fear so all types of fear can be removed by a perfect love and understanding of Jesus himself of God's love for us um, and we need not be afraid um, and if you are battling that you know we are Christians so we believe in the power of the word and we believe in the power of prayer so it may be that you you actually have that fear now so you, you've developed a fear of death because of what has happened in your life then I would want to say um the word of God is there to bring healing to you and I want to declare that freedom for you now and um, even as you're watching this and that you will be free of that Bible says he who the son sets free is free Indeed, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love and a sound mind. So let just speak the word of God constantly over yourself and you will find that you are free from that because your attention is no more on the fear. Your attention is on the Bible, it's on the word of God and that brings freedom. Um, and I also want to say, you know, if you are going through loss at the moment, don't bottle it up, you know, don't say, oh, it's all good, it's fine. You know, wear a smile when you're really, suffering on the inside it's okay to cry it's okay to to weep it's okay to sit and not do things and just uh, cry let it out it's part of the healing it's part of the healing I, I remember when I lost my mom my sister my dad I cried I cried I, I cried and it, it sometimes people think crying is maybe for ladies so I don't know people have different impressions I may not look like I'm a strong person if I cry but can I just remind you that there's a scripture that says Jesus wept, Jesus cried when his friend Lazarus died. Um, and it's okay to cry. Um, but when you're with community, I think Amy talked about his friends supporting one another, and um, then you don't have to stay there. 
there is hope and you can come out of that um, and still enjoy life to the full. Yes, yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to Dr. Rachel and to Pastor Amy for lending their perspectives and their wisdom and, you know, that biblical perspective, that rich biblical knowledge that we need to be able to live as Christians. And so, even for some of us who aren't, aren't yet Christians, we've definitely left some, we've left this session or these, these three episodes with something valuable that we can take away with us. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here with us these three three episodes and this is our final episode of this season of the mind in a storm so be on the lookout on our social media for our next season when that's upcoming and if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comment section below reach out to us on social media like this video share it with anyone you think would have benefited from it or better still share the playlist that way everybody can watch the whole the whole season um, and of course subscribe to this channel um, and of course, thank you for watching. Take care of yourself and God bless you.